Hey, how's it going? Long time no see. Sorry about that. <laughs> so uh, thank you to everybody who's like a new subscriber, even though I wasn't putting out new shit. Uh, thank you to everybody who stuck around, even though I wasn't putting out new shit. Um, it's awesome. Thank you very much. Like, I really do appreciate it. It's kind of humbling. It's also kind of mystifying, but here we are. So I'll, I'll give you some more hot flavor note action. So today I wanted to go over some of the new flavor art flavors, actually. They just released that line of seven, although I can't find a domestic source for that gummy candy wizard thing right now. Uh, so I wanted to go over the rest of them really quick. Uh, so I'm going to cover flavor arts vanilla ice cream. Um, their Bavarian cream, their New York cheesecake, their graham crust, their chocolate glazed donut, and their dragon fruit. Uh, before we begin, uh, normal testing kind of procedure on these. I've been running really high on my flavoring percentages lately. I don't know. I just want to get like assaulted with flavor. Um, so I've been running these at two and 4% as a test. And these were steeped for about two weeks before I dug into them. So it's perfectly possible these get better with a longer steep, um, but I just kind of wanted to roll with this. I was sort of in the mood, so here we go. So we're gonna start out with Flavor Arts Vanilla Ice Cream. Uh, might be being sold as vanilla gelato. As far as I know, it's all gonna be the same flavor. So uh, Flavor Art Vanilla Ice Cream. So I, I just wanted to get this out of the way right now. I'm a man who knows his way around some TPA Vanilla Swirl. Uh, this tastes a lot like TPA's Vanilla Swirl. So, it's dat free because flavor art. Um, it's not really like a richer, buttery, like uh, V-Bic flavor. Like I wouldn't even call it as rich as something like Flavor West, which I think is one of the lighter ones. Um, it's definitely like more of a soft serve. Like if you've had TPA Vanilla Swirl, you kind of know where I'm going with this. Uh, it does have like a nice bright sort of nuanced vanilla to it um it's slightly fruity i think with tpa's vanilla swirl the vanilla trends a little bit towards like malty i mean it's not dark it's not spicy or whatever but it's a little bit maltier this feels a little bit brighter it has almost a tiny bit of like a cherry-ish floral note to it but not nearly as bad as that seems like it doesn't come across like oh there's flowers in my ice cream it's just more of like a bright fruity vanilla flavor with that said i i do like the vanilla but there is an awful lot of it um that's actually probably the primary difference for me between this and vanilla swirl is that vanilla here feels quite a bit more aggressive um has a decent body to it too. Again, vanilla swirl-esque instead of having like a thick buttery um, mouthfeel to it. It's more of a full but kind of like waxy and dry body. I feel like this at like 2% is probably where vanilla swirl is. Like somewhere closer to like 4%. So it does seem a little bit like waxier and drier than vanilla swirl. Um, it actually seems like it's about right in between TPA's vanilla swirl and TPA's uh, vanilla bean gelato in terms of kind of that body because I feel like the vanilla bean gelato does a lot of the textural things that vanilla swirl does. It's just a lot more pronounced. Um, for the most part, though, that body's pretty good. Um, it isn't necessarily what you're thinking when you're thinking like ice cream, um, but it does work to thicken mixes very well. So in uh, terms of like where to use this, uh, you could obviously use it as that vanilla soft serve style ice cream thing. Um, it's good there. It, it, it will definitely work there. It has some of the same properties as vanilla swirl in that it kind of mutes um, stuff up against it with vanilla swirl. Like you can use the malt on it to knock the rough edges off fruits and stuff. And just in some like sort of haphazard testing, I was testing this up against some brighter citrus flavors and I don't know if it's vanilla. I don't know if there's extra malt all or whatever, uh, but it does like do some of the same pleasant flavor rounding in mixes. So definitely for like a soft serve style ice cream, uh, you can use this. The other sort of sneaky thing that vanilla swirl does, and this will do too, is it is an excellent texturizer for uh, candies, specifically when you're dealing with like big bright flavors. Um, it lets you add some body without really pulling things off profile. And vanilla swirl, the vanilla is easier to sort of 
mask i feel like with how much more aggressive the vanilla in here is you're kind of a little bit more limited to candies that are going to have some vanilla notes but that again is a whole lot of candies so um overall i mean this is this is pretty good i'd probably use it under three percent over three percent i found that it gets a little bit dry um if you're a big fan of vanilla swirl or you don't have vanilla swirl and you want to give this one a shot uh it's probably worth it. Uh, so next up, I have Flavor Arts Bavarian Cream. This one I'm a little bit shakier on. Um, it's not that it's bad, because it's definitely not bad. Uh, there's nothing like butyric, which would be an issue, and like dat-free creams and stuff like that. It's just I'm not quite sure what kind of cream it is, and I'm not quite sure what to do with it. Uh, so when people say Bavarian Cream, I think like TPA's Bavarian Cream, JF's Bavarian Cream. Um, I need to try the Capella and Flavor West version, but I assume they're kind of more in like the American style of Bavarian Cream, like the filling in a donut. Um, this doesn't really do that for me. So I think what I get more than anything else out of this is texture. Um, it seems to have like a fluffier, lighter, almost whipped cream texture. It isn't like really custardy you know and, and rich um it doesn't seem to have like that same kind of tartness that i expect from a bavarian cream either uh but yeah it, it doesn't taste bad it just i don't know how to contextualize this and i don't really know where i would use this as a whipped cream because there's richer more fun options available like uh, capella's vanilla whipped cream or Flavor with sweet cream, like any of those flavors I feel are a little bit richer and a little bit more fun. This is definitely functional, but I don't know if it's all that enchanting. Um, I do think that I maybe get a little bit of a spice note in here. Uh, some of the, the spice notes and the flavor art stuff end up being like super subtle and I'm not 100% sure it wasn't just everything drying out at a higher percentage. Uh, but it does feel like there's just like a little bit of cinnamon in there and it's pretty hard to pick out honestly it's not like uh cattle and cream cinnamon or anything like that um it's just like a really light cinnamon accent uh this does have a fairly prominent vanilla though and again like the the vanilla ice cream uh, it's a good vanilla it's a little bit on the fruitier side there's nothing really too dark to it. it it if you have to like go through it reminds me i guess more of like the vanilla classic from flavor art rather than like the vanilla bourbon um but it's good so it's kind of like a vanilla whipped cream, but without those like richer, dappier notes. Um, which, I mean, if you are going to use it, I would probably end up trying to like layer it with something. Like maybe that whole lack of richness would let it like stand apart more as a layer in a mix. Uh, but overall, I'm not sure when I'm going to be really reaching for this, even though it's technically fine so uh moving right along i have flavor arts new york cheesecake so this pretty much feels like a one shot um to me so you definitely have some sort of like graham crust component you have a little bit of like a cheesecake filling and pretty sure there's a strawberry in there uh you don't need the whole life story about how i'm a strawberry meat or whatever um but i don't pick up strawberry like super strongly or anything um i do sort of taste on the back of the hand and from what i can taste it's going to be more along the lines of like a normal flavor art strawberry uh like more on the realistic side not like that big like heavy glaze flavor to it it doesn't feel like it's that prominent of a player in the mix uh, i think what i get more than anything else is probably the graham crust portion of this and that graham crust portion is really similar to the graham crust from tpa cheesecake graham crust it has that same kind of like softer texture it maybe feels a little bit less buttery than the tpa cheesecake graham crust but then again you know dap so there you go um but it definitely has that kind of like biscuity coconutty like overtone to it too um it's good i mean the, the crust here definitely does taste like a graham crust it's got that going on uh but the texture is maybe a little bit soft for me like i i realize it's like broken up into pieces and shit but when you actually cook like a graham crust it does get a little bit of crunchiness to it and i'm not necessarily really getting that in the vaping experience beyond the ghost of a strawberry and the uh cheesecake note um i do feel like there is some kind of filling here um 
It doesn't remind me a whole lot of a cream cheese filling. I don't know. It, it isn't really rich enough for me. It doesn't have like that tart tanginess to it. Uh, mostly it just feels kind of like a, like a medium light vanilla cream. It has that same kind of bakery vanilla that I've been ranting about for a while. It's the same general stripe of vanilla. It's not like a dark rich vanilla bean flavor. Um, yeah, it just doesn't have much texture for me or much richness or anything. I feel like the graham crust here kind of dominates. Then you have like some like realistic strawberry notes. Uh, this <laughs> does feel a lot like a one shot though. It's one of those things that I'm not quite sure what you'd really want to do to it. I mean, you could add more strawberry, you could add more cheesecake filling. Um, but I feel like at that point... There's nothing here that's really remarkable enough to really want to use it as a bridge. And it's pretty easy to build a cheesecake flavor with some of the flavors you'd be adding on top of this other flavor. And I don't know if this really adds too much to the cheesecake canon. Uh, but as such, I'm going to go ahead and go and say mix this way higher than you think you need to mix a flavor art flavor. Honestly, um, I'd probably be uh, closer to 6% with it really and just using it sort of more as a one shot or like the basis for a one shot if you wanted to add like a couple more berries or maybe some whipped cream or something to it you know just as a cheesecake component but i feel like you kind of have to crank this one up to really get some decent flavor saturation out of it and it's fine um which is cool you know like there's nothing wrong with this or anything it just doesn't really have much in the way of like vibrancy or richness or anything it's just it's fine okay so uh, on a related note i have fa's graham crust so you know all those things i just said about the graham crust component of new york cheesecake um this feels like the graham crust component of new york cheesecake uh, it really does feel like a super super similar flavor so it's basically my description for a new york cheesecake without the light filling and the realistic strawberries uh, blonde graham crackers, not a whole lot of butter, not a whole lot of crunch to it. Uh, there is still like a little bit of vanilla here. Um, it smells like a pretty heavy AP in the bottle and I'm a little surprised when I guess actually vaping it because it, it doesn't have a whole lot of texture to it for me. Um, granted I let it steep at like 2% and for like two weeks or whatever. So maybe, maybe it magically comes out in a month. Um, but yeah, kind of from where I'm sitting now, it just doesn't really have, doesn't have a whole lot of texture. I mean, it's okay again, but this is one of those like situations where it's like, it probably just used TPA's cheesecake graham crust that's been out forever. And this tastes suspiciously like, I will say like percentage use, like I did notice that as I started to go higher with it, it started to taste a little bit burnt. Um, 4% was kind of. No es bueno. Like, it, it didn't really work out for me. And I know that's high for flavor art, but after trying these flavors, I'm thinking they're not super potent flavors. Uh, 3% seemed about workable. So that's probably the upper limit that I take it. 2% um, is probably like a good jumping off point. I think you could use it lower as like an accent. It does seem to be fairly linear at smaller percentages, but it just doesn't really ever come together into something like really crunchy without kind of tasted and burnt okay uh so next i have their chocolate glazed donut so this brings up the existential question uh what's italian for bro nuts um because really that's kind of the profile here um so just like right off the bat this isn't like a cake donut or anything like that it's it's definitely a yeast risen donut and it definitely has some of the same funkiness to it that like fa's joy does so if you're not a if if you're not a joy person a fa joy person probably steer you're clear of this one unless you want to sit let it sit for a couple months um after two weeks i guess maybe it it's going to get a little bit better, but after two weeks, um, I'm not getting a whole bunch of like breadiness or even like cakiness or anything to it. Um, it seems a little thin, a little sour, um, that, that yeasty notes a little bit too aggressive right off the bat. I'm not getting like a super heavy donut base. I feel like even their like Zeppola, um, has like a much like nicer, heavier, cakier texture. And I think maybe you could add some Zeppola into this to, uh, to get that. Um, but just, yeah, right off the bat, a little bit too much joy for me here. The chocolate here, 
also feels like it's not really punching all that hard. Um, it's one of those things that I detect more like after I vape it, like in the room note, like after I exhale, I can smell that it's a chocolate glazed donut, but I'm not really getting like a really strong chocolate flavor right up front, uh, which is good news and bad news. Uh, the good news is there's no chocolate to taste super, super weird. Uh, the bad news is just not a whole lot of chocolate to this right off the bat, or at least the way I'm tasting it. Um, the chocolate that is here. It's not like a dark chocolate. It's not like F.A. Cocoa or anything like that. It feels more like along the lines of something like TPA's Double Chocolate Clear. Uh, it's a slightly artificial chocolate flavor. Uh, it does have quite a bit of glaze, though. And I think the glaze is maybe the most interesting part of this. Um, it is super waxy, like distressingly waxy. It like coats your entire mouth, um, which is good because I guess it lets you like attach more chocolate or like a cream flavor or something to that. Um, but it's a little weird right off the jump. So this is probably almost as waxy as, or just as waxy as Capel's buttercream for me, which is pretty much a straight wax. So we're, we're talking fairly waxy here. I feel like this is another one of the one shot type flavors that they just put out. And I mean, I'm, I'm just going to be bold here. Um, I feel like you can go really high with this, honestly. Uh, so I initially mixed this at two and 4% and it just, it seemed really thin. Like it wasn't really coming together um, all that well. I did mix up a tester at 7%, maybe about like four or five days before I tested it. And it was moving in the right direction. So honestly, I'd probably go somewhere between six to 8% with this to start. Uh, if you wanted to add more chocolate in, I feel like that waxy layer could probably handle it. You might be able to slug in like TPA's Bavarian cream or something for like an extra creamy component. Uh, but whatever you do with this, though, I would advocate for a fairly lengthy steep um, just to let that joy die down and let some of like some of the more sour butyric notes uh, kind of like coalesce into something that's a little bit thicker. And last for today, I have Flavor Arts Dragon Fruit. So Flavor Art and Tropicals, not the best history there, uh, but this is actually really good. Um, so not a dragon fruit expert. I had one. It's kind of underwhelming. Uh, what this does taste like is sort of a lighter pineapple flavor with maybe some like hibiscus candy undertones to it. Uh, it's very pleasant, you know, where some of the other dragon fruits can go really aggressively like white gummy bear pineapple. Um, this feels like very soft, very natural, almost like kind of herbal, uh, which is nice. And then those like sweeter, like vaguely musky sort of hibiscus accents really work to make this pretty complicated overall. Um, it's very nice. Uh, it's fairly juicy too, which I think real dragon fruit's a little bit more on the creamy side. Um, but this is nice. It's not quite as juicy as F.A. Pear, um, but it's definitely in the conversation, which is cool. Um, and it's tropical and it doesn't taste overripe. Uh, I do feel like it has just that little bit of musk that we were talking about that makes it taste pretty solidly ripe. Um, overall, very, very nice flavor. I actually think this might be my favorite tasting dragon fruit that I've tried so far. Um, although I do love Inawaris and CPA is super useful. This is spookily delicious so in terms of where you'd use this uh i think you could definitely like sneak it in to a whole bunch of stuff especially like tropical stuff if you want a little bit more juice um to the mix i think it's going to work really well um i'm not sure with how like kind of subtle this flavor is you're really going to be able to pick it out really distinctly if you mix it like maybe under two percent i'd probably start around one percent for it if you're just going to be using it as part of like the canvas for your tropical mix. Um, but I did take this up substantially higher actually. And like up at four or 5% didn't run into a whole lot of issues with it. Uh, it didn't get like too musky. It didn't get like perfumey. Um, nothing really tasted overripe here. So I think there's some play here if you really want to lean into the dragon fruit. And I feel like if you want like a super strong dragon fruit flavor, I would probably bop up against like four or 5% which is where you say that I've lost my mind about my flavoring percentages and you're probably right. So yeah, back in the saddle, little, little rusty, super sweaty because I decided to start making videos when it was like 85 degrees again in my office. So, uh, <laughs> thank you for watching. I, I did have one like exciting piece of news, like 
housekeeping wise that I wanted to tell people about. Um, I launched my own website because I wanted a little bit more freedom, I guess is the word for it. Um, I wanted to be able to sort of have a little bit more fun with my flavor reviews. So if you thought they were wordy and pretentious before, they're even worse, <laughs> um, but I'm enjoying it. Uh, so if you did want to check that out, um, the links to like the detailed flavor reviews that are going to be down in the description are all linked back through that website. But the actual URL of the website is tasteofconcrete.com, which I'm sure there's all sorts of jokes there or whatever, but the concrete industry owns a lot of URLs and this one was cheap. So tasteofconcrete.com. Um, if you want to go ahead and follow like my flavor notes. I'm going to be doing a little bit more fun mixing stuff on there too. So should be a good time. Um, but again, thank you for watching. Thank you for sticking around through this weird hiatus. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you later. Bye.